Hi, my name is uh, Bernard Brault. I'm with OTN Systems. Um, I'd like to share with you a little bit about the uh, Metro NID that I use for uh, Ethernet testing. I, I travel around and I do uh, live demos and part of the live demos I, um, I use this box here as a traffic generator and it can generate up to one gig of traffic and it could do uh, uh, two flows of uh, traffic and it has like a standard RFC 2544 tester built into it so I use that and I use it for both layer 2 and layer 3 but mostly layer 2 uh, so I'll share with you how I use this and it's a very convenient box and uh, it's uh, built by a Sadian network and um, I really recommend the box that we've been using it for a few years and everybody who's tried it really likes it so <clears throat> highly recommend it. Um, so I don't use it for its intended purpose and uh, normally this is a NID so it's a network interface device so if you lease a service let's say from Verizon and, and they promise to you that they're going to give you 100 megabits per second and certain quality of service and, uh, and committed rate and so on uh, you could actually use uh, this product to actually you know sort of monitor constantly uh, if, if whether or not you're getting what you paid for but uh, and that's why normally it's an interface device that you put between uh, your network or your device and the actual network but that's not the uh, purpose that I use it mainly for its testing capability and it has a built-in generator and a, and a tester and it's a small compact so it's very very nice uh, so I'll, that's what I'm going to share with you so I assume here that I have and it does both layer 2 and layer 3 uh, for layer 3 you need two boxes it won't be able to reflect or loop back the layer 3 traffic you need a second metro nid but uh, layer 2 um, actually you could reuse the same box if you happen to be uh, co-located in the same location you can reach the cables so um, you connect to the box via an RJ45 so on your PC you need to actually use a, either a PC NIC card or a, a USB dongle but you have to program your PC to have a, a, a different IP address than this management IP address here uh, and it's got to be a separate IP address but in the same subnet and once you connect to the MetroNID uh, you type in the address default password is admin uh, I mean username admin admin and then it gets you in and then you can program the uh, metro nid and from there you know basically do your your testing uh, it's got um, a uh, two sides it's got a A and a B port and you see it's either SFB AB or RJ45 AB I don't think you could use both at the same time but you can configure to have like uh, for example um, uh, use both RJ45 or both SFPs or a combination of a 45 and, and SFP but you have to go into configuration mode to set that out so depending on what interface you want to test but I'm showing you RJ45 that's what I use most of the time and what the assumption I'm making here is that uh, somehow I have a layer 2 network these two ports here are connected with each other and uh, with a certain amount of bandwidth and that could be provided by you know if it was local just a switch or it could be uh, uh, an extra Ethernet service for example MPLS service could be carrier Ethernet service uh, uh, but basically you have layer 2 connectivity between these two ports and you could figure the metro nid to actually um, generate traffic on the B port right there and then it sends out the packets gets across the network uh, and then it reaches to a uh, reflector port which is the uh, second port A port the A port will recognize these packets uh, loop them back and they'll be sent right back to the B port where it's going to measure latency round trip latency and how many lost packets you have how much bandwidth was it was capable of generating or getting across and it, it could fine-tune all of that if if the remote um, uh, happens to be not co-located uh, you need to have a second uh, a second NID and this is the way it would be done so you wouldn't be using the second the B port right there and you wouldn't be using the A right there so but you'd still be generating traffic from the B port here uh, and then it would get across your network and go back to the A and it'd be looped back here from the A side and back into the B and you'd be connecting to the B side and this one you don't necessarily need to manage but as long as you know what the MAC address is so I'll show you how this is done through uh, I'll give you a little bit of a live demo I do have a, a NID right here connected and the one I'm connected to is a uh, 192.168.4.10 so I'm going to connect to this 192.168.4.10 and 
you might get into some kind of a message that says um, uh, it doesn't have a certificate and uh, just go in advanced mode and, and, and bypass that but eventually you should be able to get to this login screen and admin admin is, is the uh, username password. This is a uh, um, JDSU version of it. I, I suspect that's uh, probably a private label of the uh, CD and Metronid. Um, and so I'm logged into it. Um, so a couple of places where you may, the, the, the menus change depending on the firmware you're going to have, but you go into the port section and this is where you see you have your media selection. So as I mentioned before, I'm using RJ45s. So that's where you set this up. Something else that's kind of important is if you want to use it as a tester, you need to make sure that whatever incoming traffic is coming into the A port, it doesn't flow to the B port and make a loop. So um, uh, you need to make sure somehow that, um, oh, here's the advanced mode, proceed. So sometimes a GUI can, can play you a little tricks, you have to refresh. But what I want to share with you, the only thing that's important here for testing purpose is that you uh, traffic coming into the A port does not go back to the B port and then start looping around, right? So so what you want is is have a policy that says anything coming into the A port, um, if you know it's meant to be dropped or it's meant to be looped back, right? So um, so those are so that you have to set that to drop. The other places you look for this uh, RFC 2544 on my version, it's called SAT 2544. But eventually you get to the 2544 screen, and once you get to the screen, um, then this is where the packet generator is, and you see, as I explained before, the B port is a network port. That's the B. I could send out the traffic on the A port, but by default, I, I prefer to use the network port to send out traffic. You can enable two traffic flows. Uh, I'll just show you one for now. Um, and um, you s show details for the header. The MAC destination here, be very careful about this. So the MAC destination that you see right there, and I'll go back to my little screen. That's got to be the MAC address either of this port right there right if you're using one nid or it's going to be the mac address of that port right here so where do you find out the, these mac address so for example let's say i'm going to loop back and i'm going to use this a port uh, then you go to uh, this screen here called port and you'll see that if i'm using the uh, a port this is the mac address right there so i could just simply copy this go back to the first screen right so and then go here and then paste uh, and then apply before you can apply if you if your apply button happens to be grayed out make sure that you have this you know that if you don't have the toggle for re this is to prevent you from making changes uh, so make sure you, you you have the the box sort of unlocked so that you can make a configuration change. So so I'm gonna just gonna enable one flow. Uh, it's a layer two. If I were using layer three, I'd be going here layer three. Uh, you put the MAC address as I explained, and then you go into you could set a VLAN if you want. Uh, if you're not using VLANs, you don't have to. But here's the detail of the flow. And typically, what I do is um, uh, you set the you know the amount of bit rate so let's say I'm gonna send out 100 meg so this is gonna be sending out 100 megabit of traffic it's gonna be uh, fixed type instead of random and I can make the long frame 15 18 for example frames I think that's the longest frame uh, it supports I believe a uh, jumbo frame so you can make this bigger so here's a payload it's just data if you were to use a sniffer or something like that you see that uh, it's just a fixed pattern and I'll make the duration continuous, so continuous uh, sending of packets. I'm not going to enable the second flow because you see it's not enabled, but if I add two flow of traffic, I would enable it right there. Um, so I'm going to make apply this. And um, then in order to run it, you have to go to results here. And this is where you start. Um, and if you go to uh, details right here, and you refresh this is where you're going to see uh, what's happening so you see right now i'm sending out transmitting packets but i'm not receiving anything and the reason for that is i don't have a, a loopback cable so i'm going to take a cable 
and I'm just going to loop it right back. So I'm going to connect a cable from A to B just as a loopback cable and as soon as I do this you'll see that I should be receiving traffic. And that cable if you want simulates my network. Um, so normally I would expect to see there you go. Uh, so I'm sending out a hundred you know megabit frames. Here's gaps. So what the gap is is you know how many frames I've lost and all that. Of course I wasn't didn't have my cable connected so of course I have one big large gap and I'm missing 210,000 frames and that's normal. The, uh, the round trip delay is it's a cable entry microsecond or something like that. But if you had like a, a real network you would be able to measure the round trip delay in the hundreds of milliseconds. Um, so that's what it looks like and um, so you have this refresh if you want to make some changes and you want to enable let's say uh, uh, second flow or in this case what I could do is uh, loop back on a different box so uh, you have to go back to results here before you make any changes to the configuration you have to stop it so you stop this sometimes it throws me out and I have to refresh the screen it says start because it says start I know it stopped <clears throat> and um, what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, loop back on a different box here that I have right there so I'm gonna log into my second NID and show you what that looks like and the second NID happens to be this one here it's this Acadian network NID you'll see that the screen is a bit different it's different firmware uh, is it a 2.10? It is a 2.10, so I should be, there you go, same admin and min. And I'm just going to use this second one as a reflector, and then I'll bring my cable back to the second one as opposed to the first one. So I have to go to port here, and this is the port, the A port on the second box I'm going to use as a reflector. So I'm going to copy this MAC address, go back to the first generator, go to its configuration, first packet header and make this the destination Mac All right I'm gonna apply this go to results uh, start this and I don't have the cable connected yet it's still in the same the first config so if I look here and I, I need to refresh this right so it's gonna refresh every other second so I don't have to click the refresh button so sure enough it's a it's sending out packets but you know it's not receiving them because it's sending them to an IP address that doesn't recognize so so I'll take the cable disconnect it and basically hook it up this way so so right now what I had is I had the cable here sort of loop back onto itself and I'm taking this cable there and I'm gonna connect it right down there so I'm gonna do this right now there so I'm in this mode with the second you know remote uh, reflector if you want and uh, I'm gonna look here and look at that you know of course I'm not losing anything I got a cable in between but you know I think it becomes much more interesting when you run an actual uh, suite the other thing about the uh, RFC 2544 is I believe you have more than just a generator um, I'm gonna show you this so let me stop this right here so I'm gonna stop it and this is the basic generator but if you want to run the full test suite so I go to test suite right here and you could add a test suite and call it uh, overnight test and you could select the jumbo frame size uh, on go outgoing port again you have your peer setting this is where you set the MAC destination of that reflector and then you can run a full 2544 test suite uh, and the test you want to run is would be throughput delay frame lost and back to back and you go in there and you select the settings be careful uh, because this thing could you you don't know in advance how long it's going to take to run all the tests 